We break through the noise by drinking our own champagne. So watch this video, Break Free, to find out how you can too. Hi, and welcome to Break Free with Top Break Marketing. I'm Joshua Knight, and I'm here today with Sruthi Kumar. She is the Senior Marketing Manager at Sendoso. Sruthi, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. So tell me a little bit about Sendosu. What is it and what do you do? Yeah, so we're a sending platform. So we really help our uh, customers reach their customers and prospects in a very meaningful way by sending um, you know, company swag, direct mail, sweets and treats, booze, handwritten notes, the whole nine yards, um, in order to make really like human connections with their prospects and customers. So do you feel like this is, in a way, it's kind of going back to a more simpler form of marketing compared to digital marketing? Do you feel like that is more effective as our world gets more digital? So actually, I think they go back hand in hand. So I think what we're trying to do is really bridge that online and offline experience. So not to say that digital marketing does not work. I'm a marketer. I run our field marketing team. We use digital heavily, but it's just about kind of bringing all the channels together to create that seamless experience for the end user and that person that you want to book a meeting with or have a signed contract with or whatever else you need from them. So it seems like it's a way to be even just a little bit more thoughtful with a prospect and show them that you're thinking about them. Is that yeah, absolutely. So just like kind of having that personalized and custom touch, um, making people feel like a little special or like kind of breaking through the other digital noise that they're already getting. So we're here at B2B MX and we, there's like 1,200 attendees here and everyone got SDR emails and targeted ads. But how are other ways that you can kind of get your brand in front of the person that you want to meet in here? And so that's where like, Using direct mail can really help by landing on someone's desk instead of their inbox um, and kind of breaking through that digital noise. I know there was somebody in our in the swag bag this time that had an air freshener yeah. as their swag and they called it out specifically to say, did we want to send you a brochure? Did we want to send you some sensory? And now when I smell that specific type of vanilla, I think I'm going to be thinking of that brand. Yeah, so that was actually Rollworks. And so I loved that idea. I think it is about just like doing something a little more creative. Uh, so even for us, like we've done the, you know, backdrop at events, um, but we try to do something that's a little different as well. Instead of just a one sheeter that someone may throw away, we have these marketing pop-up sliders. Um, and on the front, it says, you know, how do you make your marketing messages pop? And then you open it, and two tiny boxes pop out at you. And on every side, there's a different direct mail idea. And then inside it says, you know, by landing on someone's desk, not just their inbox. And then we have some direct mail stats, and it's pretty cool. So I think it's just about, like, sending the message and, like, that piece of content, but in a different way that people feel excited about taking in. So if that's a smell or something that pops up in your face, like, those are all great ways. So I wonder, the problem that we talk a lot about even in digital marketing is that personalization at scale. Do you find when you're dealing with this kind of physical marketing that scale is a huge issue and how do you go about solving that? I mean, I assume that's the solution that yeah. you're offering. <laughs> yeah, so Sindo, so if you're not familiar, we really marry that like logistical part of direct mail with the you know, SaaS part of it. Um, so we have global warehouses, our customers send their items to our warehouse and we can inventory them. And then they can access them in our standalone app on Sendoso.com or in any of our integrations where they're already working today. So we really encourage people to like use Sendoso in their tech stack. So we have integrations with Salesforce, Marketo, Sales Lock, Outreach, Pardot, HubSpot, you can name it. So it's just making it very easy for them to already use direct mail as part of their workflow and what touches they're already doing. Um, so yeah, I mean, doing it at scale doesn't have to be hard. We can enable you know you to send one to one. We can enable you to send one to many by like uploading a CSV list on Sendoso.com or doing a smart list via Marketo or doing it through a campaign in Salesforce. So um, those are all the different ways that you can personalize at scale. It almost seems like we talked for a while about how marketers needed to be to think like publishers. Mm -hmm. So now marketers need to think a little like shipping or almost like retailers. That's where like using a platform like Sendoso or a different sending platform can really lift off of those logistical questions because marketers are supposed to focus on like being creative, creating pipeline, like being very strategic. Like we have so many hats that we need to wear. so. Spending time on like shipping boxes and packing them is not 
going to be valuable um, if you're doing this, you know, to many people, you know, many times a quarter. Um, so I think that's where personalizing at scale, there is the logistical piece, but then it's like, how are you getting those messages out and how are you being personalized? So different ways that you could do that is, you know, leveraging things that you see on LinkedIn from the prospects that you're trying to reach out to. How are they describing themselves on their own bios? Like what are the words that they're using that they care about? So you're a content marketer. So maybe you're really, you know, keen on storytelling. All you need to do is have our SDR write a note and use the word storytelling in there. And all of a sudden you do feel that connection. You're like, wow, there's something in this note that feels so relevant to me, but really what they're doing is reflecting back what they read on your own profile. So there's really like kind of low hanging fruit in ways you can be personalized. Of course, you can send something that's like alumni related to them or a local sports team. So there's so many different ways that marketers should be able to spend their time being creative. I love the idea in marketing that something that I'm really passionate about is that genuine attempt to make a connection or a genuine attempt to delight. Yes. That seems like whether it's through content or whether it's through something tactile, that really is like, turns out the best way to get someone's attention might be to delight them or surprise them. Yeah, so? absolutely. Like who doesn't want to have something like really delicious or beautiful land on their desk? I mean, even for content marketing, like you don't always think about direct mail in your kind of workflow of what you're trying to do, but you're creating like great pieces of content, stories, like eBooks, white papers, like you can print those out and have them land on someone's desk and have a post-it note in there and mark the page that you want your prospect to read with a handwritten note. Like those are all wonderful things and it also becomes like valuable information. So let me pivot a little bit and talk about your career personally, because I think it's great that you are fairly early in your career, not just starting out, but fairly early on. Can you tell me a little bit about your journey in marketing, how you got to where you are today? Yeah, absolutely. So I um, was interning while I was in college and then I was doing more of an inside sales job. Um, it was, you know, not really my scene. And um, my boss was like, you know, I think you kind of have an knack for marketing. And I was like, why not? Um, tested it out. And it's something that I loved. And I've been a generalist for years and just recently shifted focus into field marketing. And um, it's been funny because I think it was always like the natural way I lean towards. And it's kind of the way I thought and understood how to bring value into um, brand awareness, but also driving hype and leads. So it's funny to actually be wearing one hat now. And I'm really excited to kind of see where that goes. You started with Sendosa fairly early on, right? And then you were telling us off mic that you and your colleague had kind of built this marketing program up. Can you walk us through that? Or you don't have to get into yeah, every little I mean, detail, I but... Tell it like sure a story. <laughs> but yeah, so I was the first marketing hire at Sendoso um, over two years ago and got to have the opportunity to build a team from the ground up um, with my marketing ops manager, Sarah. Um, and so it was the first time for both of us. We were, we're still like early in our careers, but it was, it felt very early. Um, but we really uh, talking about kind of where your talents lie already. Um, she was very ops driven and focused, whereas like I definitely had more of like the field demand gen hat on. And so together we were able to like bring a lot of programs to life. Um, she started our tech stack and then we were able to kind of build, build a lot of brand awareness around our name. So those are the things that we really focused on in the early days. It was about brand awareness. We were competing with players in the space that had been around for 10 plus years. So they had great partner relationships and great brand awareness in the space. And it was kind of breaking through and being like, hey, we're also doing something, we're doing the same thing, but we solved it even better. So how do you bring that message out to the right people? So it was all about building lists, building our database, building brand awareness. So that was really our focus the first year. And then we started scaling our team and uh, the third hire for us was content because being able to tell the story was massively important. Um, so we have a content superstar, her name is Bree, um, and she really brought our brand to life. Um, we were able to, with that, able to scale our team even more. And uh, today we're a team of 12, which feels massive, but we're growing even faster. We just recently raised our Series B, and so uh, it's been a wild ride. Can you dive a little bit into some of those tactics then? So when you said, how do we get the word out? How did you? In the early days, uh, you know, having our brand there was huge. And then also just building lists. And so building that database was a huge priority for us. So 
an easy way to do that is to sponsor an event. So while it has a high ticket price, um, you are getting, you know, a massive uh, kind of reach into different uh, on, in a different audience. So that also solved the problem of also getting our name out there. So by being able to do so many different types of events, so BDBMX, this is our third year here. Um, we've been at Serious Decisions, we've been at Marketo Summit, now Adobe Summit. So there's so many different, you know, industry events that we partook in very early on. And then the other thing we really tried to do was work with the partners that we have integrations with because we were encouraging our users to work where they were already working from. Like, don't worry about learning a whole new system and like a whole new interface, like you can do it right in your tech stack today. So working with those partners um, in the early days was just very key because we knew their audience was right for us. So any type of partner events, um, so if it was like a one-off field event or even, you know, uh, sales off and outreach, those are both integrations that we have. So sponsoring their user conferences every year. So that was a big way to get into the right audiences. So feel free to take a minute to think about this question because I don't want it to be a gotcha one. Okay. But how, so how do you stand out at an event? You have your sponsorship, you have a booth. What do you do to really get that foot traffic to stop and look at you? So this is a fun question because I feel like this is something I'm challenged constantly, not just because I want to be like the best field marketer, but also just because of what our brand is. Our brand is all about breaking through the noise. So how do I do that in a place that is so noisy. Um, we really try to put our best foot forward with our brand and drink our own champagne. So being able to send something out before to the right audience to have them come to our booth. So something we've been trying recently is not, you don't have to do anything super expensive. Um, we do scratches at our booth. So it's really fun. You get people interacted um, and they can only grab one of the giveaways that you have. So instead of someone coming up and be like, I want a water bottle and everything else that you have up there. Um, we encourage people to just kind of take one thing away and they get to do something super interactive at the booth. So earlier to this event, or prior to this event, we sent out scratchers to talk target accounts, inviting them to our booth, letting them know if they bring their scratcher, they'd be able to redeem what was one on there. So we had AirPods, we had candles, we had socks, t-shirts, and everything that we've designed for this conference is limited edition. So what we've seen is because we've been going to the same shows three years in a row, like that's great. Um, we brand consistency, but so many people come up and they're like, I rock your socks all the time. I rock your t-shirts all the time. So how do we make it exciting for the people we've already met or maybe change companies and there's, you know, still a hot prospect and a hot lead. We actually did, you know, custom t-shirts and socks for this event. So they're all BWMX. We have stickers, BWMX, and it's all Arizona themed. Um, we have some Arizona themed hot sauce. So just getting like people excited about what they're seeing. Um, but what I've seen is everyone around us is also trying to do some cool stuff. So you have some characters on the floor, like doing some cool real life characters of you, real real time. So I think it's just about keep, keeping people engaged. And we also have a bright color. And weirdly enough, not a lot of people capitalize on that. Hmm. And having the bright color, like, grabs people's attention. And again, low hanging fruit. But if you just put thought into the way that you're reflecting your brand, uh, it can be huge. And what we've seen too, is having that consistent experience through digital baseball. Our whole social media play we were using the same design that we were using on our booth and people actually came up and they were like, oh, I saw this in my LinkedIn newsfeed. And I was like, exactly what we're trying to get at. We're trying to get people to feel like I know you already and feel comfortable and excited to see us. I love that idea of that the event marketing starts long before the event. Oh, absolutely. Laying that groundwork. So were you using paid and organic? with that? Yes, we were doing paid through Terminus, Google Ads, and Facebook and LinkedIn. And then we were also doing organic on LinkedIn and Twitter. Mm -hmm. And also encouraging our SDRs, AEs, and our customer success managers to share on LinkedIn as well. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So when you say targeted accounts, mm -hmm. is that specific organizations or more specific industries? Like, is this an account-based marketing kind of play or is it a little broader than that? Yeah, so we are moving to an ABM approach when we are doing a, our events because sometimes you get to large audiences and it's hard to 
really get in contact with anyone. Um, the beautiful thing about our product is that anyone can use it in any vertical. It's direct mail. If you're selling, you can use it. If you're trying to reach an audience, you can use it. So um, for us, I would definitely say it's more of an ABM play, but we do actually go after uh, different verticals as well. So different shows that we do may just be focused on financial or realtors. Uh, this is obviously a tech conference. So there's different verticals that we go after as well. That makes a lot of sense. One of our previous guests said, that in a few years it won't be called account-based marketing, it'll just be marketing in the yeah. same way that content marketing is just marketing. Do you feel like there is that kind of convergence happening in marketing where we don't have to call out these tactics, they're just expected as part of the mix? Oh, absolutely. I feel like when I first started in my career, ABM was the hot topic. And I remember we just got Terminus and I had gone to the Flipline Funnel Conference. And I remember being in awe and being like, wow, this is so cool. And then my organization actually moved fully ABM. We were built on another company's platform. So really, we could only go after that company's customers. Uh, so we were fully ABM. And so going into Sendoso, which was my next company, um, not realizing that ABM was a whole separate tactic from just demand gen and like learning that. But honestly, if you're a good marketer, they really shouldn't be too different. Um, you know, you have different goals. So if that's a demand gen strategy or an ABM strategy, I don't know if they should be called out so differently. Um, we do the double funnel approach at uh, Sendoso, so we do have demand gen tactics while we do have ABM tactics as well. I don't know about them just being called marketing one day because I think we like as marketers to feel like we're doing something very strategic. So I think it's almost marketed towards us <laughs> of being like, oh, you're using ABM or you're doing demand gen. So that may just be uh, because we're marketers. <laughs> It is true. Like we like to specialize yeah. to be able to say, well, I am a content marketer, but also I should know about SEO. I should know about paid because I'm going to be writing copy for paid. I should know about ABM if we're targeting accounts. So maybe it is that like a feeling of specialization, like you would feel marketing, but then you're also aware of the whole holistic mix. Oh, know? absolutely. We're growing our field marketing team here at Sendoso, and I've been thinking about like, how do you sell just doing events? And field marketing is not just doing events. You are working very closely with your sales team, enabling them to be able to do follow-up, and we do our full follow-up strategy as well. Um, SDRs report to marketing at Sendoso, and so we really use SDRs as a key, in a key, as a key channel when we're doing follow-up and pre-event stuff. Um, and then we are also content marketers because we write our emails and we write our social media posts. And you're also got to put your marketing ops hat on because you need to understand what was, you know, the metrics that we achieved and what were the goals that we were going after and how did we get there? Um, and why are we even doing these things, right? There's some things that are just industry standard. We all fall for it, but there's some things that you have to be very strategic about. So why are we going to be at this event next year? Why are we signing on with a field event with a certain partner? So I still feel like a marketing generalist all the time, but I just get to kind of do it all around events. It definitely is that creative and the, the mathematics part of it yeah. for every marketer, isn't it? Because it, it comes down to measurement. Yeah. Measurement is how we know what to do, the things that actually... I love you saying that just because something has been done in the industry is not a reason to do it. Because we do get sucked into that. So. Oh my God, we get sucked into it all the time. But also, it's just funny talking about being creative and mathematical. I had... Um, an interview that I took that job and it was my first internship in uh, as a marketer and uh, it was actually a MarTech industry as well um, which I only returned to years later at Sendoso but um, the CMO asked me are you analytical or are you creative and I was 21 years old and I was like I don't know I feel like I'm a little bit of both and she said you can't be both and I just want to call BS now because you have to be both. Like I may not be the most analytical person on my team, but I get to work with this marketing ops manager, which I told you about, we built our team together and she's very analytical, but I get to learn from her and understand like, how would my mom's person do this? And that's the cool stuff that you get to take with you. Like as a marketer, you should be well-rounded. Like, you're a content marketer, but you could put a demand gen campaign together. You're not just writing. 
So I don't know. I think I would love to go back, you know, eight years ago and challenge that in the interview because I remember feeling like, oh no, I have to pick one. And if I don't fall in one, I'm not going to be successful. It really is a strange idea. We just, we love this binary of left brain versus right brain. And, but then you get this idea that, oh, well, the creative types are just sitting up there in their beanbag chairs with their <laughs> lava lamps going, wow, wouldn't it be cool if we did this? And then on the other hand is a bunch of robots who are crunching numbers. Yeah. And really, you're right. Like for some people, those things are going to overlap into a circle and some there somewhere on the continuum, but it can't be one or the other. You can't be one or the other. I will tell her. To you tell you tell me who she is. I'll go back and tell her myself. Yeah, I think she's very analytical, so which is probably why that happened, because, you know, you only know yourself, right? You don't know what you don't know. That is absolutely true. Yeah. So I think stepping outside of marketing, we always like to just take a little look at what people are like outside of all of this. Yeah. You know? So. Is there something that you're passionate about, something that you like to do in your free time? I love music. So I tend to try to do things around music and I love to travel. So those two things really coincide. So going to music festivals or traveling to um, somewhere where there is live music. So I love like even domestic travel, going to you know Austin and New Orleans and going to see live music. I'm from San Jose um, and I live in San Francisco. And weirdly enough, there's not a book big live music scene so uh yeah just kind of like walking into a bar and experiencing that versus like nashville austin new orleans like i said is very different um so i love music and it's something that's like always tied my family together me and my sister together and it's also what has brought me so many good friends um throughout the years of every phase of my life so there it is that's the creative Part. You know, you yeah. can be an analytical marketer and you can also go to a show and have a great time. Oh, absolutely. And I love to sing and I used to play piano and guitar. So, you know, like, was very creative. Eventually, I'm going to put together a marketing jam band. Oh, it's my just, gosh. It's going to happen. You know what's so crazy? If you, like, go downstairs and talk to a bunch of people right now, like, most of these people are talented. <laughs> like, we could put a, a band together, no problem. So, for our final question, though, and you can deliver directly to camera... What should marketers do to break free, whatever that means to you? Okay, so I think to break free, you just, you know, with all those marketing activities that we're supposed to do, um, doing the check boxes, that's totally fine. But I think you should bring your personality into it. I think so many of us are so scared of, like, having our corporate voice, but I think our personal voice should be in there, too. I think the only reason why Sendoso did stand out so early in the early days is because we got to incorporate so many of our early founders and members' um, own personalities into the brand, and even the way we pitch our product today is by the voices of you know our sales team and our marketing team and our co-founders and CS. So I think it's just about being okay with like being yourself and incorporating that into your whole corporate brand. That is absolutely wonderful advice. And thanks again, Sruthi Kumar from Sindosu for joining us today. Great. Thank you for having me. 